Okay, so uh, this is a short video about how to debug issues with your modular, or at least a way that I did um, debug some uh, ongoing noise issues in uh, my Eurorack modular system. So what I have here is an Enclave Flight 12U um, with a bunch of modules in it, and um, we're just listening to the lower half right now and um, I haven't turned it on yet obviously but anyway um, this has a make noise powered bus board inside it and that is um, sort of rated at 1.4 amps out of the box but if you look at all of the equipment you'll see that it's actually rated at 4 amps like there's a limiter on the board at 4 amps and the supplied power supply is actually 4 amps so it's really plenty of headroom um, and uh, these modules all together are about uh, one amp total um, so we're not we're not going to be exceeding the uh, power supply uh, rating but anyway I'm going to turn it on and um, you can hear a fair amount of good stuff going on I'm going to also activate the panel as workout for fun but um, you know, I can tell that a lot of the problem is just obviously the uh, metropolis here or at least maybe we would initially blame the metropolis and you also might notice that that sort of high-pitched whine seems to be diminishing, diminishing over time so that's sort of another interesting thing to note. Another thing that you might note is that the VCA matrix is turned all the way up and so this is a actually a really decent module for debugging uh, noise in your power supply. What's going on here is that um, the, the VCA's the voltage controlled amplifiers need clean direct current in order to do their job of amplification. You can see that nothing is patched uh, and so really all we're listening to is uh, what is happening in the power supply because what's happening is that the VCA's are amplifying that noise so to a certain extent, I can get rid of certain types of noise by simply taking these out of the picture, um, turning all their levels down, but I'm still getting a fair amount of noise. Uh, really, these guys were only picking up sort of a high-pitched whine, and uh, you can tell that if I take them out, I don't really lose that much. Um, I can't tell that if I turn off the beloved metropolis that that at least stops one kind of noise. Um, anyway, I'm going to turn all this stuff back on just to make things absolutely miserable. Okay, so the first thing you do when you're debugging issues is obviously try and reduce the variables. So, the easiest variable to reduce here is pulling out modules. Um, and so you can sort of go down this path and get to know uh, what modules are making what noises. So I'll start doing that. I'll start by pulling out uh, the uh, VCA matrix, I mean, rather the metropolis. Alright, so now uh, you can pretty much hear Pamela's workout mostly, which is sort of a famous module for having interesting noise problems. Um, I think it's actually kind of pretty, like if you sort of cycle through the menus and whatnot, it makes all kinds of really interesting noises on its own. And I want to make sure that you understand, like, this problem is going to be solved, but not by uh, doing anything with the Pamela's workout. Um, and none of these modules are really to blame. That's sort of going to be the punchline here. But anyway, you got modules from a bunch of different manufacturers causing a bunch of different problems. You know, you can start unplugging them. The sounds will go away. And um, but you know, you probably actually want to use your modular to. Uh, you want to use the modules to make music, right? All right. So we're getting better. 
all these things are going away. But um, you know, uh, as I was testing these modules on different cases, I noticed that they weren't having any problems on this old Pittsburgh uh, foundation case that I had, which was my first system. Um, and none of them actually had any problems where you could hear noise coming in through the power system for any of the modules. And um, that uh, box has a make noise mini power in it. However, um, one good thing that I haven't noticed was that um, actually as a result of having email conversations with uh, Mr. Nelson from Truckatronic Electronics um, was that the power from the make noise, um, the, the power brick on the wall, uh, if I plug that into the enclave, suddenly all my problems went away. Um, so this is that that wall wart, and uh, if you look at it carefully, it's somewhat hard to read to get the uh, camera to focus. You'll notice that the input uh, is only has one number on it. Um, so it says 120 volts AC input and 60 hertz, 24 watts. Um, whereas the power supply for the uh, Enclave, aka Make Noise Powered Bus Board, the input uh, is 100 to 240 volts uh, with the variety of uh, frequencies from 47 hertz to 63 hertz. So, you know. What I realized was that these are what's turning the AC into DC, right? And so, um, you know, this is a typical switching power supply, uh, as they call it. And the nice thing about the switching power supply is that the um, switching power, and you can also see this says 4.3 amps, so this is a pretty beefy power supply. Um, but in any case, um, you know, the nice thing about switching power supplies is you can use them any, anywhere in the world. Um, however, uh, the problem with them is that they tend to have more uh, of what's called ripple. And ripple is where uh, there is some variation in the DC current due to the switching technology that's used to convert AC into DC. Um, with uh, the, um, you know, essentially this is a, a different type of technology. So um, something like this, a linear power supply is, um, you know, can only work in one country basically, or in a country with 120 volt AC uh, switching it, or, you know, going back and forth at 60 hertz. Um, and the reason for that is, is that it has a large transformer in it. So this is the, um, this is the schematic for that guy. And um, what we've got on the left here is a transformer. And then there is a diode bridge, which is performing the full wave rectification of the AC signal into DC. And then you'll notice there's this sort of thing with two parallel lines across the outputs. And what that is is a very large capacitor. Um, actually, it's not that big. but. Um, Anyway, it's a 2200 microfarad capacitor, and what that's doing is that's smoothing out the ripple. And so the result of this is pretty interesting uh, for the purposes of your Eurorack modular. The result is that uh, the modules work better with the linear power supply. And I had heard about this from uh, people like uh, Paul Schreiber of. Um, synthesis technologies and um, you know I had been thinking I would get rid of the enclave case and get a doper case but it turns out that's not necessary so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug the modules back in and you'll hear the noise again but then I'm going to switch from the supplied uh, switching power adapter to a linear power adapter that I ordered through Newark Electronics um, 
unfortunately the um, triad was available in a uh, slightly higher power rating than came with the um, Pittsburgh modular um, and uh, it solves all the problems so uh, I'm going to plug the modules back in and then I'm going to switch the power supply and you will be amazed. All right. So here's the uh, moment of truth here. So first I'm going to brutally unplug the switching power supply. Now I'm going to plug in the linear power supply. And that's it. Problem solved start of Pamela, the very famous Pamela's workout that everyone hates, but uh, anyway, uh, so this is kind of interesting, you know, I don't unfortunately have uh, an oscilloscope, so it's very difficult for me to, uh, actually, or impossible for me to get um, some more technical information about exactly what's going on. If I had an oscilloscope, what I would be doing is I would test uh, the output from the switching power supply versus the linear power supply and hopefully be able to quantify the ripple both in terms of amplitude and frequency um, and then I could also have a look at the various uh, plus 12, minus 12 volt and 5 volt uh, power buses within the um, make noise powered bus board and be able to see kind of if there was any additional processing that was happening is on the on the bus board because the bus board you know the distribution board is uh, producing all those different voltages uh, with yet another sort of uh, switching device but that one is supposed to be well out of audio range uh, but in any case it seems to work better with this uh, triad uh, WDU 15 1700 uh, ordered from Newark Electronics. Uh, it's a 1.7 amp um, wall ward. It's quite heavy um, and uh, quite large and because it's a transformer it also generates RF so if it's near another transformer for the Eurorack we get into a bit of trouble. But anyway, uh, that's it. I uh, hope that this helps other people who have enclave cases. Um, this certainly worked for me. Um, and uh, thanks again to Mr. Nelson of Trogatronic, who uh, carried on a pretty long email conversation with me trying to debug these issues and also talking about sort of the differences between switching and linear power supplies. Um, and uh, all right, cheers.